Just as the electromagnetic catapult on the Fujian aircraft carrier astonished the world, the Chinese Navy's next colossal warship has quietly entered its development phase. How will this legendary Type 004 carrier reshape the global maritime power landscape? I am not privy to specific details. In September 2025, during a routine press conference, Defense Ministry spokesperson Zhang Xiaogong offered this seemingly straightforward yet profoundly meaningful response to questions about China's fourth aircraft carrier. He immediately emphasized, however, we advance aircraft carrier development based on national security needs and technological progress. This quintessentially Chinese response, delivered amid widespread foreign media reports that China's first nuclear-powered carrier had commenced construction at Dalian Shipyard, sparked endless speculation among global military analysts. Following the successful electromagnetic catapult trials on the Fujian, China's carrier development has shown no signs of slowing. In September 2025, Authorities officially disclosed that three carrier-based aircraft, the J-15T, J-35, and KJ-600, successfully completed electromagnetic catapult launch and recovery training aboard the Fujian. This breakthrough marked China as the world's second nation to master full-spectrum electromagnetic catapult technology for carrier-based aircraft, laying a solid technical foundation for the development of the Type 004 aircraft carrier. As China's first domestically designed electromagnetic catapult carrier, the Fujian's electromagnetic launch system demonstrates world-leading performance. Utilizing a medium-voltage direct current integrated power system, the carrier can achieve differentiated launches for aircraft of varying weights, boosting launch efficiency by 40%. It takes only 15 minutes to transition from cold start to launch ready status, with a maximum daily sortie capacity of 300 flights and a failure rate as low as 0.21%. Its average failure interval for electromagnetic launches far exceeds 1,000 launches, whereas the USS Ford's actual failure rate is as high as one failure per 272 launches. Military expert Zhang Junsh stated in an official media interview that these three carrier-based aircraft types will qualitatively enhance the Fujian's integrated combat capabilities for air, sea, and land strikes. Considering the combined range of carrier-based aircraft and missiles, the carrier strike group's operational reach can cover the second island chain, reshaping the strategic landscape of the Western Pacific. Inspired by Fujian's technological breakthroughs, development of the Type 004 carrier has quietly commenced. The modification of the Wuhan cement carrier model has sparked widespread speculation. Compared to Fujian, its island structure is smaller while deck space is larger. This strongly signals nuclear propulsion, as conventional carriers require smokestacks and larger island structures. Nuclear-powered carriers eliminate smokestacks, allowing for smaller islands and greater deck space. For China, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier represents not merely a new weapon system, but an inevitable choice driven by national strategic imperatives. As the world's second-largest economy, China relies on overseas trade for over 30% of its GDP, while the Belt and Road Initiative demands robust long-range maritime escort capabilities. A nuclear-powered carrier functions as a mobile outpost, capable of sustaining national interests in distant waters over extended periods. In terms of core technological capabilities, China has overcome the challenge of miniaturizing nuclear reactors. The Linglong-1 is the world's smallest commercial nuclear reactor developed by China, capable of generating 300,000 horsepower per unit. By comparison, the K-15 reactor aboard Francis Charles de Gaulle aircraft carrier produces a maximum of only 30,000 horsepower, meaning a single Linglong-1 reactor is equivalent to 10 K-15 reactors. While the Fujian-class carrier has already surpassed the U.S. Ford-class in electromagnetic catapult reliability, the Type 004 nuclear-powered carrier is poised for comprehensive breakthroughs across multiple domains. Compared to the Ford-class cumbersome trapezoidal elevators, China's proprietary electromagnetic launch system boosts carrier aircraft sortie rates by 30%. Regarding aircraft configuration, the Type 004's flight deck has reserved interfaces for the sixth-generation J-50 fighter. More critically, its integrated unmanned aerial vehicle command module, this invisible sword, can simultaneously control hundreds of stealth attack drones, enabling a swarm-based sea-air integrated warfare model unprecedented in naval history. The Pentagon's latest simulations reveal that when this 120,000-ton behemoth deploys 72 J-35 fighters and 200 attack drones in the Western Pacific, the existing carrier strike group concept will become utterly obsolete. No air defense system can simultaneously counter such a dense saturation attack. Regarding radar systems, 
the Fujian class carrier has already been equipped with the same radar suite as the Type 055 destroyer, far surpassing the capabilities of the US Ford class. The Type 004 carrier is likely to further enhance this advantage by integrating more advanced integrated radio frequency systems. The combination of nuclear propulsion and electromagnetic catapults represents the pinnacle of carrier technology. The Type 004 is expected to adopt new reactor technology enabling a decade of maintenance-free operation. Four electromagnetic catapult tracks, paired with stealth fighters and drones, will form a comprehensive blue water combat system. The application of modular construction techniques will significantly boost building efficiency. China's shipbuilding industry commands 52% of global capacity, enabling construction cycles for comparable carriers to be compressed to 60% of the U.S. timeline. This industrial system advantage is the fundamental guarantee for China's rapid aircraft carrier development. Viewed through the lens of history, the significance of the Type 004 nuclear-powered carrier extends far beyond the military sphere. In the 1894 Battle of the Yellow Sea, the Zenyuan's tragic charge epitomized China's era of possessing seas, but lacking naval defense. The gap between China's navy and Western powers at the time rendered our territorial waters virtually defenseless. In 2002, when the rusting Veryag arrived at Dalian port, no one could have imagined this nearly scrapped carrier would become the starting point for the rise of China's navy. The moment the J-15 successfully landed in 2012 marked China's mastery of core carrier technologies. From learning on the Liaoning, to independent innovation on the Shandong, to technological breakthroughs on the Fujian, and finally to the comprehensive advancement of the Type 004. Each step in China's aircraft carrier development has been a rectification of historical shortcomings. 120 years ago, we could only watch helplessly as foreign warships roamed China's waters. Today, China's steel giants are sailing into the deep blue, turning a century-old maritime dream into reality. The disruptive advantages demonstrated by the Type 004 carrier fundamentally challenge the traditional perception that aircraft carriers equals floating airports. Future maritime dominance will no longer be a simple tonnage race, but a complex contest involving intelligent algorithms, energy revolution, and system-wide coordination. Just as 19th century Britain buried sail-powered warships with steam-powered ironclads, when nuclear-powered giants combine with quantum radar and electromagnetic cannons to form the Deep Sea Reaper constellation, the so-called island chain blockade, will become nothing more than a Cold War relic displayed in military museums. From a yellow water navy to a blue water fleet, from refurbishing old vessels to building indigenous nuclear carriers, China has traversed in 30 years the maritime journey that took the West three centuries. When the lights burn bright at Dalian shipyard, and when the nuclear reactor of the Type 004 ignites in the future, it will not merely be uranium-235 that burns, it will be the flame of a nation's century-long indomitable will. Looking back at history, The launch of Britain's dreadnought battleship in 1906 rendered the entire European Navy obsolete overnight. Today, the technology and strategic vision embodied by the Type 004 herald a new round of reshuffling in the global maritime power landscape. Naval supremacy no longer relies solely on tonnage and firepower, but increasingly on the combined strength of intelligent algorithms, energy revolution, and system-wide coordination. At this new starting line, China stands shoulder to shoulder with world powers for the first time and is even beginning to lead the charge.